In March 2020, I enjoyed a lovely walk in the Clent Hills in North Worcestershire. It was only a few days after that the country went into lockdown because of the coronavirus pandemic. It is now over four months later, and as we have some easing of the lockdown measures, I at last find myself out and about again. Today's journey takes us north of Worcestershire and beyond the city of Birmingham. We continue northwards to head into East Staffordshire, and as we pass Burton-upon-Trent, we soon cross the River Dove as we enter the next county, home. Good morning. Well, it's the 2nd of August 2020 and welcome to Derbyshire. I'm in the very south of the county today and Derbyshire has actually been my home for a very long time. So for me, it's really nice to be doing a walk closer to home. Well, today's walk starts here in the beautiful village of Repton. Repton is a village in South Derbyshire, located on the edge of the River Trent floodplain, about four and a half miles north of Swaddlingcote, the most southerly town in Derbyshire. Repton is close to the county boundary with neighbouring Staffordshire, and about four and a half miles northeast of Burton upon Trent. Once the capital of the Anglo Saxon Kingdom of Mercia, Repton is noted for St Wyston's Church and Repton School, as well as the Anglo-Saxon Repton Abbey and medieval Repton Priory. Christianity was reintroduced to the Midlands at Repton, where some of the Mercian royal family were baptised in AD 653. Under the east end of the church is an Anglo-Saxon crypt of the 8th and 9th centuries, which once held the bones of St Wyston and was a place of pilgrimage. To the east of the church are the remains of Repton Priory, an Augustinian house founded in 1172. Its precinct wall and arch of its 13th century gatehouse are still important features of the village. After the dissolution of the monasteries, part of the Priory buildings became the home of Repton School, which was founded in 1557. Another part became Repton Hall, which is now also part of the school. Repton has one principal street, lined with a number of handsome Georgian houses and cottages. The medieval cross on its imposing octagonal steps serves as a focal point on the road junction at the north end of the village. I think Repton must surely qualify as one of the prettiest villages in South Derbyshire. I walked down Brook End, where I found the Boot Inn, a 17th century coaching inn, and one of several pubs in Repton. Walking up Boot Hill onto the High Street, I passed the post office and local shop as I made my way back to the cross. OK, that's a good look around Repton. Time to start the walk. From the cross, 
I walked along Burton Road for a short distance as far as the Red Lion Inn. Here I turned left along a narrow tarmac footpath between a wall and a wooden fence. Soon I came out onto Meter Drive, where I turned left, crossed a residential street called the Pastures, and followed another narrow path as far as Well Lane. Turning right and then left at the next footpath, I walked along the edge of a field as I entered open country. Soon I climbed a stile to walk along the edge of a playing field. Just beyond here, I took a track which headed southwest. Got a view of the old Willington power station now in the background. Always thought that's quite a spectacular thing to see here in South Derbyshire. Funny thinking about it now. When I look back, I did my walk in the Clent Hills in North Worcestershire towards the end of March this year. Now back then I told myself that I'd do this walk, or at least a walk, a week after that. Over four months later, here I finally am. It was literally three days after I was in the Clent Hills that the UK went into lockdown, so I was actually lucky to do that walk when I did. But it's just been a dreadful time for everybody. I feel so sorry for all these people that have lost loved ones and just the economy's just put into such disruption. Some businesses will probably never open up again. I don't know, I don't know what's gonna happen. As the government keeps saying, we're not out of the woods yet, but at least we're having some easing of lockdown. It's, yeah, I mean, I always think that being out in the fresh air now, these past sort of four months experience has told everyone that probably being in the fresh air is being probably the safest place to be. The biggest risks are actually being in enclosed spaces, like going into the supermarkets, shops, pubs. It's ironic because it's great that I can now finally go to a pub and see friends in there, but of course they have to zap you with their sort of temperature gun and and then all the tables are kept apart. But to be perfectly honest with you, there's no way that they can do social distancing in pubs. Absolutely no way. Especially when people have had a flipping belly full of beer. <laughs> there was a bloke, lovely bloke I know, a, a regular in the pubs. And the first time I went into the pub after lockdown, it had actually sort of eased and pubs had started opening. He, he was just in a real state because <laughs> Probably because he hadn't touched a drop over the last four months or so, who knows? But the landlord had to actually escort him home and at the end of the day, that's defeating the object of social distancing, surely. And now you've got to wear a mask, you've got to wear a face covering when you go into shops, which I think is the right thing to do. But it's odd, isn't it? You've probably got more room to manoeuvre in supermarkets, certainly, than you have in a pub and yet, you can't wear a, a face covering in a pub. How are you going to drink your beer and have a face covering on? I don't know. There's no right way of doing it. I mean, I'd, I wouldn't want to do Boris's job for all the money in the world. You know, 
we can criticize, you know, we can agree with what he does, whatever, but we're not the people that have to do all the decisions. We don't have to make the decisions every day like he does. So, you know, like he says, lessons are learned on the way, but we're not out of the woods yet. I just hope that it's over sooner than later. And uh, for me and for many other people, it's just great to be back out in the outdoors again and enjoy a lovely walk here in Derbyshire. As I got great open views across the South Derbyshire countryside, the track became a path as it cut its way through some wonderful barley fields. Eventually, the path led to Dale Farm, where I followed the farm track onto Newton Lane. Right, well, it's just a short walk along this country lane and that takes me into Newton Solney. Newton Solney is another picturesque South Derbyshire village, about one and a half miles southwest of Repton. Anglian invaders came up the River Trent in the 16th century and settled in the attractive location on the confluence of the rivers Trent and Dove. They called it Nawanshire, meaning New Farm. It wasn't until the 1300s that the village became known as Newton Solney, after the de Solney family who descended from a Norman knight and were chief owners of the village in the 13th and 14th centuries. The Unicorn Inn is one of two pubs in Newton Solney, which provides a friendly atmosphere to all guests and regulars alike. The second pub is the Brickmaker's Arms, which has a nice out-the-way feel with friendly staff and locals to make customers feel at home. At the west end of the village is the Newton Park Hotel, which appears to have begun life as an 18th century farmhouse. This was then altered and enlarged by Abraham Hoskins shortly after 1800 to become a country house. Well, although it's a lot smaller than Repton, Newton Solney is certainly another of South Derbyshire's prettiest villages in my opinion. I turned right along Church Lane to reach St Mary's Church. It dates back to Norman times and is thought to contain effigies of the de Solney family. The church was heavily restored and altered in 1880.
Well, normally on a walk, I'd go inside the church and have a look around, but I think today, as much as I'd love to go inside this one, I'm going to resist it because we're still in the pandemic and I'm sure it would be all right to go inside if I put a face covering on, but I think it's better to be safe than sorry, so I'd rather not take the risk. It's a shame, but this church isn't going to go away, so I can always come back once the pandemic's over and go inside then. From the church, I came out onto Trent Lane, which led to the banks of the River Trent. I could see the mouth of the River Dove opposite, where it flows into the Trent. Bearing slightly right away from the riverside path, I passed to the left of farm buildings as I followed a track across the fields heading northeast. Okay, it's got a chain and a lock on it. Public right of way, so is that legal? I don't think it is. Oh well. I'll just have to climb over the gate. Oh. And as a couple of my friends said recently, on their walks, that's Mark and Ollie, always climb a gate on the hinge side. Ah! You know, I've lived and worked in Derbyshire for a very long time now. In fact, I've lived and worked here longer than anywhere else that I've lived and worked. So it also means I know Derbyshire better than anywhere else. I tend to sort of come to South Derbyshire more for work, so today it's nice because it's a Sunday afternoon, a lovely sunny day, and the thing I like about South Derbyshire is it's, it's generally more sort of level countryside, not really any steep hills down here, so it's perfect for a nice Sunday afternoon stroll. So I can imagine people who live, who live in Repton and Newton Solney, having all this on their sort of in their backyard must be lovely because it's just gentle walking countryside for them to take their dog for a walk. I can just imagine that'd be really nice. So yeah. And for me, it's, it's nice to come and do a walk in South Derbyshire because I tend to very rarely come to South of the County to do my walking. So yeah, really nice. I'm approaching Repton now, so I'm almost back where I started my walk today. So when I get back, just get out of my walking boots and I'll make my way home. It's only about a 40 minute drive away, so that's nice. Yeah, another lovely day. Leaving Repton, I drove along the A38, bypassing the city of Derby to take the A6 northwards as I made my journey home. <laughs> 